Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to retouch your own images in Photoshop to kinda recreate that Hollywood look you always see in the movies. Hey guys, once again, welcome back to Photoshop. And yeah, if you wanna do a cinematic color grading in Photoshop, you kind of start the same way as you do for a movie. So before the actual grading always comes the color correct, which is in short words, uh, yeah, just a lot about technical stuff like um, correct white balance, removing noise, removing color tints. So when I start for an image like this, I just sit back and take a look to see if there's anything wrong. So yeah, just zoom in a bit. And yeah, some things I notice is that the horizon is not straight, it's actually a bit tilted, a bit rotated. I also notice that the white balance is a bit too cold and I also see that there is, let's say, a magenta tint. So yeah, to fix all that there are numerous techniques. The first we will take care of is the, yeah, the tilted horizon. So I just select my crop tool, make sure to check the lead crop pixels. And if you now start rotating your image, you can see that Photoshop actually shows us a very nice grid which makes it very easy for us to, yeah, to kind of find some guidelines like the entrance here and then align our image. Hit enter, okay, and as you can see we now have a perfectly straight horizon. Next you want to take care of the white balance and for that I will use the camera raw filter. So first select my layer and just right click and choose duplicate and let's call that one, um, yeah, just raw for example. And like I said, apply the filter called Camera Raw Filter. Before I start doing things manually, I always try white balance all over first because sometimes this already gives me a very nice result. So yeah, as in this example, I think the magenta color tint is removed. But now the only issue is that the image is maybe a bit too, a bit too warm. So I just bring the temperature down from 15 to, for example, 5 or let's say 6 and yeah I think that now starts to look great. After that it's now time to take care of the shadows and highlights so usually I kind of bring my highlights all the way down to let's say negative 30 and then I bring my shadows up to also let's say plus 30. And as you can see this kind of gives me a lot more dynamic range. Uh, I also try to lower my contrast to let's say negative 30 the reason why I lower the contrast is that I want a flat image for the grading. So if you think about filming, you often use a very flat picture profile, like S-Log or S-Log2 for the Sony cameras, and they give you the maximum amount of dynamic range. Okay, so after that it's now time to hit OK. And yeah, I think now our color correction is done. So now we can start with the actual grading. So first. What I want to do is kind of bring the exposure a bit down because I don't like this super bright sunny day look. I'm going for this darker, moody, dramatic Hollywood blockbuster look. So to do that, just create a new adjustment layer. It's called black and white. Okay, and then just hit the blend mode all the way to multiply. And as you can see, now the image is maybe a bit too dark, so I will bring the opacity down to let's say, yeah, let's say 50% or even 60%. Okay, so after that it's now time for the actual color grading, for the actual color look. And like I said, I'm going for that famous Hollywood look, which is very often blue in the shadows and yellow orange uh, tones in the highlights, which is often the skin tone area. So for that there are also numerous ways. One of the best ways is actually either color balance or the selective color. Um, then just go to colors here and select the blacks. So like I said, I want bluish colors in the blacks. So just bring in some of the cyan color, maybe something around six. And then also add a little bit of blue by bringing the yellow slider to the left side. In this case, it's a bit too much. So let's say negative seven, for example. Okay, then after that go to the neutrals and also introduce some cyan and also um, a bit of blue like before and then let's go to the whites to yeah at the opposite so the opposite of cyan is red so just a tiny bit of red so negative two and also bring the yellow slider all the way to the plus area 
to add, yeah, as you can see, some yellow color into the highlights. So in this case, maybe 20. Okay, and now the last thing you want to take care of is set the blend mode from normal to color because I want that layer to only affect the colors and not the brightness values. So yeah, right now we finished our basic uh, color look. It's now time to take care of the shadows and of the highlights uh, separately. For that I create a new solid color. Um, first let's take care of the shadows. So like before, select the kind of yeah, cyan bluish color. Okay, then make it invisible and select the layer mask. Then go to image and apply image. And usually just leave anything at default, click OK. And if you now all click the layer mask, you can see that we have black and white image. So if you know how layer mask works, black um, kind of hides everything and white reveals things. So right now, if I bring back my blue solid, it appears in all the bright areas. But I don't want that. I want the blue to appear in the dark area. So select the layer mask, hit Ctrl I to invert it. And as you can now see, the skin tones um, aren't affected anymore. It's only the dark and the mids area. Um, of course, I don't want that much blue in the mid tones, so just go to the image adjustments and select the levels because now it's time to fine tune our mask. So just bring the slider all the way to the right side to bring in some contrast. And as you can see right here, we kind of erase some of the bluish tones in the mids. Um, so, yeah. It's just all about fine-tuning your mask because each image is different. Your goal always should be to get a very, let's say, black and white image without too much gray values. Okay, so once again, here's the before and after. And yeah, after we fine-tuned our mask, it's now time to play around with different blend modes. So for example, you can choose multiply, you can also choose um, overlay, can also choose linear light. It's all about finding the best blend mode for your um, yeah, perfect look or for your personal taste. In my case I will now stick to multiply and maybe bring the exposure down to let's say 50%. Okay then after that it's time to take care of the highlights and we'll do exact the same. Instead of blue I will choose now um, a kind of yellowish um, yeah, color tone, so maybe something that looks a bit like sand. So yeah, maybe something like that. The cool thing now is that once we have one good layer mask, we can always go back and still use it for other layers. So just all click it and then move it to your new layer. Okay, so right now it's the same as before. We are affecting the shadows, but now we want to affect the highlights. So again, hit Ctrl I. And as you can see, we now only affect the highlights. And like before, just play around with uh, the blend modes, maybe overlay. Okay, so here's the before and after. And then also bring down the opacity. So let's say something around 40. So here's the before and after. So yeah, for the moment, I think the grading looks good. It's now time to kind of support the film look by cropping the image to a different um, aspect ratio. So once again, select the crop tool and then go to ratio and uh, choose 16 to 9, which is the aspect ratio of, uh, yeah, of full HD. Um, then just try to find the perfect perspective. So in my case, I'll try to um, position the horizon here at the lower third. Then just hit enter. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is create those black bars you often see uh, in movies because very often people uh, talk about film look and actually mean those black bars. So just create a new layer right here, then go to edit, fill, and now black is our background color. So just yeah, choose under contents the background color, click OK, then choose selection tool right here. And then go to style, choose fixed ratio, and now type in for width 21 and for the height 9. So if you wonder why we choose 21 to 9 as an aspect ratio, well, it's the actual aspect ratio of the so-called cinema scope format, and that's always used by, yeah, by big Hollywood productions. So then just draw a nice selection. Okay. The goal should be to kind of yeah, reach the borders left and right. Then right click and choose transform selection. 
then go to view and make sure to yeah to kind of check the um, the snap function right here because then if you move the selection you get those pink lines and it's very easy with these lines to kind of center your selection then hit enter and after that just hit delete on the keyboard and as you can see we now have our black bars so yeah here's the before and after and as you can see I think these black bars actually help create the illusion that this photograph is actually a still image from an actual movie. Of course you can also create different looks with all these techniques that I've showed you in the video. So maybe you want to add some warmer colors to get a kind of summer look. Maybe you want to add some green colors to create something like the matrix. So it's all about yeah, just trying out for yourself which, uh, which um, yeah, blend mode, which uh, color fits your style or fits your movie. And yeah, after we finish now our color grade, there are maybe some more stuff that I would like to do to this image. So the first one uh, is create a new adjustment layer called exposure, because now I want to, let's say, create that kind of vintage uh, soft look. So just go to the offset and type in the value, for example, 0, 0, 0,005. Okay, and as you can see now, the image starts to look kind of washed out and a lot more vintage as before. So here's the before and after. So after that, it's time to maybe create a vignette. So create a new adjustment layer uh, with the curves. Then just bring the curve all the way down to the darker area so that the image gets actually very, very dark. And yeah, then just zoom out and then select the brush and with the black foreground color right here and the very big and soft brush just kind of draw a nice, uh, let's say a nice spot in the center. And yeah, as you can see, we end up with a pretty nice vignette. So before we end this video, I will once again show you the before image and now the after image. And as you can see, I think now the image really looks a lot more cinematic than before. Okay guys, that's it about getting that cinematic look in Photoshop. Like always, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, check out my yeah, Facebook page, website, whatever. And like always, stay creative and have fun.